Welcome to New Planet School. In this video, we are going to measure pi. As you know, the ratio of the circumference c to the diameter of every circle is the same and has a value of pi. It's an amazing result that can be shown in an equation like this, and it's true for every single circle. Pretty amazing. Question is, how do we know this is true? Have you ever tried it? Have you ever actually measured this to see if it's true? That's what we're going to do in this video. Okay, so what we did is we walked around the house and we found six different objects. You can see here some of them have a small diameter, some of them have a large diameter, and we picked six of them and we simply measured the circumference to the diameter and divided them to see if we would get pi or not. So measuring the circumference actually is a little bit tricky. So what we did here is we tried several things. We used three different tape measures. We tried to bend them around here to get the circumference. It's a little bit tricky. Some of these don't like to bend so much. So we tried to trace things and then measure it that way. Um, a really good way was to use string and wrap the string around here and then cut it with the scissors and then measure it as a straight line. Or even take the round object and mark it at some point and roll it down the paper and then you can just use a tape measure to measure that linear distance between the two places you mark and you can get a pretty accurate value for the circumference. That tends to be the best method. Once you've done that for each of the objects you can then do the diameter and the diameter is pretty easy. You can just measure the distance across um, but we wanted to do it fairly accurately so what we did to make sure we were getting the longest distance across the circle is we would take the object we would trace it on a piece of paper and then once we had the circle drawn we would take the piece of paper and fold it so that it ex the circle exactly overlapped you have to look through the paper to see when the circle overlaps itself fold it and then you could mark either side of the circle and then you just measure the straight line distance exactly between those two points and get a very accurate measurement for the diameter. Pretty simple. Once you've done that you just divide them and see what you get. So let's analyze the, the measurements we got. Okay so this is our ratio of the circumference to the diameter and the first thing I show here on this plot which is from 3.10 to 3.20. So if our measurements are good, they'll fall somewhere in this range. Uh, the first thing I show is the actual value of pi. So that's what this vertical magenta line here is, is the actual value of pi. So let's see if we can, if our measurements fall within this range. So here's our measurements, all six of them. This is our data. And we had, what this shows is we had um, one value that fell in this range and one value in this range, two fell in this range and so forth. So all of our six measurements fell very close to the actual value of pi. Some were high, some were low, but they all fell very close. Now if we take our six measurements and find the average, which is the number you would typically want to report to somebody, um, we get this red line here. And so our value, this is our value here, this is our value of pi, is not very far from the actual value. It's not too bad. It's about 3.16 instead of 3.1415926. So not too, too bad. But of course, in terms of what we can actually report, that's our average, but how confident are we? We also computed the standard deviation and this is the standard deviation of the data, this green shading. So we're pretty confident to within one standard deviation that the value of pi is approximately here, plus or minus this width. And you can see what's very nice is based on our measurements is that we're very close to the value of pi and even with our standard deviation, luckily it includes the real value of pi here, which is nice. So we are completely consistent with what people believe the actual value of pi is, although we tend to get something a little bit higher, but we are consistent with it within one standard deviation. Okay, so it's important when you make these kinds of measurements to think about what exactly can you actually say. 
So let's think about that. If all of the measurements can be treated as independent measurements of pi, the only thing that we can conclude is that the value of pi is 3.1595. That was our average to within a standard deviation of 2%, which is not bad. But given that we made these six measurements, that's about all we can say. However, it's possible to look at the data from a different perspective. We made six different measurements of six, six different objects, one measurement of each, and we found the ratio of the circumference to the diameter for each of them appears to be approximately the same. In other words, there seems to be evidence here, even though we only made six measurements, that indeed the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of different circles has the same value, and that value is approximately equal to pi. Now, of course, since there's measurement error, we can't say that exactly, but it seems to be strong indication that this rule is true. And then the third thing is that probably more measurements are needed. We only made six. We had six different objects. They were kind of close in size. Um, one wonders if we used different tape measures, would we have ruled out a systematic error? Um, one idea, for example, is that tape measures can only measure distances down to a certain level, like a millimeter or a 32nd of an inch. If we had measured diameters and circumferences of much larger objects, maybe it would have been actually even more accurate. And we didn't test that. So that's something to think about. So take some of those ideas and go try this yourself and, and uh, let us know what you get. And I'll see you back here at New Planet School very soon.